You're gonna get five. You're gonna be in so much trouble. Yes, I want the Maserati. Yes, I won the Academy Award. I wanted it when I was 12, and I still want it to this day. Welcome to The Dev Show, Lauren Hall. I was reading your Instagram, okay? So your Instagram bio says that uh, you are a human that really likes to sing. And I am. You've been live streaming throughout this whole kind of scenario. Um, how have you found the, the transition from doing gigs and events and then coming on to online? Like, wherever it's, we're used to it now, but like, how was it for you? Yeah. Um, so... I want to say that I was one of the, I mean, obviously this was affecting everybody at the same time and there are a million musicians around the world, but I hopped on the train of live streaming very, very quickly. Um, I just remember I was gigging at the time that COVID hit. I was literally out of town on a gig. I had just played a gig. I believe it was like March 16th or something. And that terrible I had all the piano stuff. I don't even know. It, it was different in every state, you know, like when it really got declared an emergency. Yeah. Um, so I was gigging a ton and I was just on the road all the time. And the second that it was declared a pandemic, I was just like, I don't know what I'm going to do. Like, I feel like I'm, I have nothing now. So I actually drove across the country from that gig in California to Illinois to go stay with my family. Um, and I remember it is such a blur at this point because it, it just all happened so fast. I remember the night that it was declared a pandemic, I went on Instagram and posted on my story that like in two days, I'm going to start giving concerts online and you guys should start watching those. So I rushed <laughs> I rushed across the country from California and the same day that I arrived in Illinois after that trip, that night I hopped on and did a concert. Now, fast forward, I thought the pandemic as a lot of us did was only gonna last two weeks. Um, so I told everybody, you know, I'm gonna give one concert every day for two weeks just to keep people busy. And uh, it proved to be a little bit longer than two weeks. I Just a bit. Know this. So um, I ended up giving, I think for two weeks straight, I ended up giving one concert every night, but it got very difficult to mentally and physically keep up with. I was creating a new set list every day. It was one hour of music. And if you really think about that, that's like eight to 10 songs a show. And mm -hmm. that's a lot of songs. That's a lot of singing with less than 24 hours to recuperate. So I had to start adjusting everything. And then I started doing a little bit less shows. And then I started kind of using this time to build my fan base and create conversations with people. Um, and it just kind of, it changed with the times as, as people were, people had no idea what to do. So people were just sitting on their phones. Um, I think everyone's so, a little bit guilty. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we, we didn't have a lot to do. So it was definitely really big for me. It helped me build my followers. Um, and really, honestly, for me, it really helped me work on my craft. Like my voice, my musicianship, all of it just improved so much. Uh, it was like a live rehearsal every day, basically. Yeah. Um, so now that things are starting to transition a little bit into like, some things are opening, some things are not. I decided that I'm going to give weekly concerts. So I give them one time a week uh, for an hour. Um, and I'm starting to book some gigs again. So I do plan on keeping up the virtual live streams because I think it's a nice way for people to, um, you know, at the end of the day, just people watch it while they're doing their homework or mm -hmm. at the end of the shift. Uh, so it's kind of nice to bring that music into someone's room and be there with them when we can't be live. So, yeah, in a way that I've talked to several people over the duration of this whole thing. And one thing that's pretty consistent in every guest that I have is 
they found a way to somehow bring people more together than you know it, it it would never seem that way you know it seems like we're all isolated and whatnot but i mean for content creators at least um there's been a little bit of sense of to- togetherness obviously you don't get that good feeling of going out and playing playing a gig right and the people are there and it's just a whole different i don't know what the word is it's a whole different atmosphere what do you miss yeah. about about those days i can't believe it's those days now you know no, it's it's absolutely insane that it's been a year. Also, I just want to say that I love the way you say a boot. Do I say that? <laughs> I a boot, a boot. You say it like a true Canadian. I watched a lot of Degrassi growing up, so when they said a boot, a boat, about, yeah, like yeah. I was like, why are they talking like that? There's a yeah, yeah there's a few. <laughs> do I, so do I sound like I have an accent to you a little bit? Definitely have a Canadian accent. Oh boy. See, yeah, not a bad thing. Not no, bad thing. I mean, uh, that, it could be, it could be way different. I could be talking about hockey, Tim Hortons, talking like That's... this a little bit, but uh, <laughs> so true. The real Canadian accent comes from the from from up north, you know, or in when in, in, in Antarctica. You know. You know, yeah, pretty much. What? You ever had Timmy's? What? Tim Hortons. Tim, Tim Hortons? Hortons. Timmy's. Yes, I had a few friends that I played soccer with uh, that were from Canada, so I, I got to know a little bit of the Canadian things, but not not enough. Have but you I ever heard been? Tim Hortons has good coffee. It does, I guess. I don't really have a preference, but um, what <laughs> have you been to to Canada or anywhere north? Of... I've really only been to Niagara Falls on the New York side. Right, way better over here. Not gonna. Not, not to. Uh, I'll just have to pay pay Canada a visit. I know. Eventually, one day when when it's possible, our borders are still <laughs> yeah. closed. I work in tourism yeah. too. I mean, for my for my day job, I know everybody's got to have a day job like people like us. Um, so yeah. I work in tourism and talk to a lot of people. But uh, now, <laughs> it's gone. Um, but yeah, I mean, um, so let's just move it on. Sorry, go ahead. So to, so to answer your question, since I will always get us off topic, I apologize. Um, I really struggled in the first uh, few weeks, months, actually, about, um, you know, people like us, we get happiness. We feel happiness and joy when we connect with humans, right? People, um, people. Yeah. We're people, people, we, we feed off of other people's energy. We like to give our energy to other people. We have to be, we have had to be incredibly intentional about connecting with people um, during all of this, which I think has been very important for people to start to shift their mindset. I think that it was a little too easy for people to connect with social networking and people were losing the authenticity of, of communication with, with other people and they weren't, it was very surface level. So I think that this did allow a lot of people to become intentional with that. Um, when I first started playing these shows, I am very much someone that likes to play to my audience. There are, there are musicians that could be alone in their room and play and get so much enjoyment off of just being by themselves and playing. I wish I was like that because I just don't get the same feeling when I'm alone in my room playing and singing as I do in front of people because I've started to realize that a lot of my intention with my music is really just connecting with people. Um, It's singing lyrics that connect with other people, Um, seeing someone's face when I sing something that really connects with them. It's that's something that cannot be replaced. And when you're singing to a screen, you're singing to your own face. Exactly. Uh, You haven't haven't got to see anybody for a year, you know, Exactly. you don't get to see the reactions. Exactly. They can comment on things. They can send you hearts, but it's really, it doesn't compare to being in the same room as these people. Um, So I cannot, wait until I can do that again because I am so sick of playing to a screen. <laughs> oh, for sure. I get it. 
But uh, the, um, normally what my show would do is we would travel to conventions and expos and basically like any event. And I can kind of uh, relate in the way that, you know, you know, um, talking to a, another human being and just generally, I don't know if it's if it's a thing or not, but having a lot of people around just kind of gives you, I don't know if it's butterflies or if it just makes you feel like just just jolly, you know, just just kind of float floaty, happy, you know, in a way. I totally understand what you're saying. So before the interview, when we were talking about whether I liked the suburbs of the city, the reason I just moved to the city at the beginning of the month. The reason why I love the city so much is because it's bustling and there's people around everywhere and everyone's got their own lives and doing their own things. And it's just so fun to watch. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so I get what you mean by like, just like being around and around all of the vibes that people are putting off. There's nothing that compares to that. I know it's, it's crazy, but um, all we can really do is, hope and work towards getting back to where we were and be patient. I think that's one thing that everybody, even if it's still hard, has learned a little bit of patience in a way. Um, oh, ain't that the truth? It's force, force fed patience. There we go. Um, and then I wanted to, to mention, so it was just some, uh, something that you probably talk about a lot. And I didn't even know this when I when I when I was talking to you for the first little bit. You were on The Voice. Yeah. It says S seventeen. Does that mean season seventeen? There's that yes. many. There's that many seasons. Wow, that's they are on. I'm ninety nine percent sure they are on season twenty now. It's crazy. And that I filmed in twenty nineteen, so it's been about a year and a half. Um, but they just go quick. Yeah. Well, that was, that was, that's crazy how that was like a, a your last, um, I, I, I'm, I'm, could be wrong. I shouldn't assume, but it's like, you got a big thrill in and then this, you know, everybody, I, I booked, I booked 12 conventions and 12, 12 events. And then, and then this, you know, everybody, everybody kind of had something. Um, ah, but absolutely. I was going to ask you how often uh, you find yourself being asked about the voice or talked to about the voice. It honestly depends. So I like to keep the voice as a blip in my career because I want, not because I don't appreciate or think that it was one of the most amazing things that I've ever done because it is the, one of the most amazing things I've ever done as far as my career goes. But I never want city living. City living, there you go. <laughs> I like to live with the mentality when I got onto the show that that was not going to define my career that was going to help jumpstart my career. So I never wanted it to be the only thing that I've done. So I try to approach conversations about music very modestly when it comes to the voice, because you run the risk of one, sounding like you have a huge ego and huge head if you immediately come out by saying, I was on the voice. Because mm -hmm. I, I think I would look at someone and be like, okay, and um, I lived in Los Angeles where like three-fourths of the singers and musicians that I knew had also been on reality shows. So it started to feel like less of a big deal to me, um, which is good because it did humble me. Um, mm -hmm. But I will say I now that I'm in the Midwest a little bit more because in California, people don't really watch a lot of TV. They're usually making the TV. Right. Um, in the Midwest, people ask me about it all of the time. Um, it was a little difficult to talk about when I had just come back. But now that I have had some time to really reflect on things and my experience, I really enjoy talking about it. Um, I, most of the time people are asking me like about Kelly Clarkson and how's Kelly and John and Blake and Gwen. Um, 
And the reality of the situation is you don't really get to spend that much time with the celebrity judges unless you really get further into the competition. Mm -hmm. However, um, from what I did spend with them, I really enjoyed, especially Kelly. She was an angel human being altogether. Um, but to circle back to your question, I don't get asked about the voice as much anymore. And I don't really get people that recognize me ever also because I've completely changed my look since then. Um, but I do enjoy talking about it when people ask me. Yeah. And that's kind of something that I do on the show is like ask people about being asked about something before you ask them about it. Because now I understand how you feel about it. And I, and, and I could choose different questions, you know, yeah, not to say absolutely. you didn't answer three of them in, in that one response. I ask me any questions that you want. No, no, it's, it's, it's great. Um, I was going to ask you a little bit about, um, how that, how that all worked with, um, being around the celebrity judges, because I know that from, from what little, little experience I have in, in television and, and whatnot, I know that a lot of it is waiting and, and sitting and just being behind the scenes, um, very little of it is what you see on the TV. So, I mean, your experience in a hole going there, how was that, uh, the trip? Like, to tell me about the trip. What, what were you excited about? What were you nervous about? Yeah. So, you're right. Like, the biggest industry phrase is hurry up and wait. So, hurry up, hurry up, get be ready, get ready, get ready, dress it, but wait. Mm -hmm. And then you're there for three hours. Um, but that's just a part of the industry. So, I lived in Los Angeles at the time. I lived in LA for the past four years. I just recently moved back to Illinois. It was supposed to be temporary because of COVID, but then it ended up being permanent, just ended up relocating. Um, I spent a month in a hotel. Um, and again, like you're completely correct. 90% of it happened. All the stuff was happening behind the scenes and you saw like, this much maybe even just like that much of what actually happened um it was one of the coolest experiences of my life I got to meet about 80 to 90 of the most talented singers and musicians I've ever met in my entire life and will probably ever meet from all over the country I made friends with all of these people wonderful genuine people um and a lot of my time was really spent, uh, was spent preparing, rehearsing, voice lessons, dress rehearsals, choreography, um, band rehearsals. And then a lot of it was free time other than that, spending time with people, collaborating with people, um, enjoying that wonderful California weather. Um, it was basically a month of a band camp basically right and then at the end of the month you get to sing the minute and a half selection of a song to four celebrity judges and what you see on tv is what you get you know you have no idea if someone's going to turn for you when they're going to turn for you um specifically for me I was so, oh my, I was blown away <laughs> by what happened with my blind audition because if you watch it, Kelly turned for me after I sing like three or four words and thank God, because it just gave me the freedom to really just like let go for the rest of the song. Um, but it was just, a, it was very surreal. The actual time that I got to spend on stage, um, the times that I really got to be mentored or worked with the coaches, a lot of it was on camera. Not all of it was aired, but there were cameras like present. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't get to work with Kelly as much as I would have wanted to, but the advice and feedback that she did give me is th things that I still hold true to my heart today when I sing. Um, Those things resonate like, with you. They really do. And I mean, of course, it's coming from someone like Kelly Clarkson. You're like, 
yes, queen, whatever you say, queen. <laughs> um, but she really had some fantastic feedback. She was a good coach. She really was. Um, but yeah, like it, the hardest part obviously was when it ended and saying goodbye to your friends and a, a new family. But at the end of the day, we're all still alive and have each other's contact information. So you see voice reunions all the time. Um, and I'm still friends with a lot of them. So I, it's, it's an experience that I will carry with me forever. It will be a part of me forever because not a lot of people can say that they've done something like that even though it feels like a million people have because there's so many seasons mm -hmm. it it felt like you know it was all of the validation that i had ever wanted in my life that i had the talent to do something with my voice and not only did it help jumpstart my career with just being able to say and put on my resume that I was on The Voice, but it really mentally locked it in for me that like, this could be a thing, Lauren, if you really wanted it to, you could really pursue this full time. So that really, that helped me really take off with my career. That's awesome. Um, and I want to kind of uh, talk a little bit on your own music. Um, how is... Have you written uh, a lot of songs during this this whole period of time? I don't even know what to call it anymore. Just call no, it this they're... period of time. Have you done a lot of writing? So I am very on and off with my writing. Um, I get inspired and I rapid fire write and then I won't write for like months. Mm -hmm. um, it was really, really difficult during this time to see everybody else creating so much and to feel like I wasn't doing as much as everybody else. So I got very much caught in the comparison game, which comparison is a thief of joy, which also leads to paralyze, paralyzation, paralyzation. So I had a, a few months where I was a little paralyzed and didn't know why I couldn't create and was just kind of getting in a little hole. So I decided to take the pressure off of creating a little bit and just kind of focused on finding my joy um, of music again and singing. Cause that's really what I fell in love with was using my voice. Um, I do a lot of like cover gigs and most of my shows, I sing a lot of covers. Um, I have written a few things here and there, nothing that I'm fully ready to release to the world yet. But I do know that I spent a lot of time getting mentally strong during this time. So I know that there will be a time where I am just bursting with new music and writing, writing, writing. Um, but to answer your question, I didn't write that much during this time. I just really focused on finding my happiness again. No, yeah, I can... I can relate, um, and I, I, I see where you're coming from in the sense that uh, before we mentioned how this time has brought everybody's focus and attention to a screen, and being brought to a screen for people, not like us, but people, content creators, it has really, it, it's really like a, a almost a brainwashy kind of comparison bubble and it yeah. sucks and you love the people that you're looking at and you're talking to but it it just makes you feel like you're not doing enough always it i think that's just like the curse of a creative person you are constantly watching others and being inspired by others but it's also like why didn't i think of that mm -hmm. why am i not doing that but this is the thing I've really started to understand because I've worked with a lot of mentors and I've really tried to figure this whole life thing out. Not one path is the same, not even close. Not one person has the same upbringing as you, experiences as you, talents, interests, whatever. No one. So 
for us to be comparing ourselves to other people that are in completely different points in their lives and have had completely different experiences, it's just not fair, you know? Yeah. So when people like, there are people that I know they're trying to encourage me, but they're like, you should be writing. You should be doing this. You should. I'm like, yo, hold up, hold your horses. I will do those things in time. Patience is what we talked about, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. I am just learning to be patient and allow myself to figure it out artistically because I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be in this business. You wouldn't be in this business if you didn't have creativity in the first place. Right. I think that we, we as creatives like to think that we define ourselves by our last creative project. And that can be a dangerous game sometimes. Absolutely. So I think focusing on the love for what you do and why you do it is, is super important. And that's what I've been doing for a little bit. So it will come. Yeah, no, that's, that's awesome. Uh, I have, a, I've talked to, a, like I said, a lot of people and uh, it's nice to talk to somebody who kind of just described something that, that's similar to what you went through, which is like refinding what you love and what you love to do. I'm glad that you're going through that and taking the time to actually find the love for it and not force yourself to do something for validation. Um, exactly. But uh, I also wanted to have you do a song uh, for the show. I've only had one artist ever do a song for the show, and I was in the background uh, singing uh, so you can see me singing. I'm not going to do it that way this time. I'm going to shift the attention over to Lauren and uh, you guys can take a look. So it's interesting that we were talking about patience, right? Um, this song is all about patience. It's an original song and my favorite original song that I've ever written. I wrote it after I had just gotten off of The Voice. And I was just thinking about that saying, hurry up and wait, hurry up and wait. And I was just so frustrated that nothing, I felt like nothing had happened yet. And I just had this big break, but I was still really struggling to make ends meet. So then, here comes this song. It's called Wait. Feel like I spent my life one day ago on my mind. Walk with my head held high day by day, trying to make you mine. Chasing a dream, it ain't always what it seems. But I would do it, baby, if I didn't believe. There's too many times I think I'd get in the way. Kind of found a hard to find a reason to get up every day. Will and the sacrifice all my 